Equivalent units of production. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and the website, stltest.net. I wanted to go over one of the more difficult concepts with cost accounting, which is equivalent units of production. <clears throat> the main part of the chart that I'm going to cover is at the bottom of this template. And as I scroll down here, the number one thing I, we need to re keep in mind is, is that the reason that we have equivalent units of production and need to calculate it is that different units are at a different stage of completion and different units as a result are at a different stage of incurring costs whenever we shut our factory doors at the end of the day. So we need an apples to apples comparison to have an equivalent unit that's apples to apples and to have equivalent costs attached to that unit in order to manage our costs. And so that's why we have equivalent units of production. This is also taken from the cost accounting as a reference, this template that I have set up is taken from cost accounting, the Horngren 11th edition. You see the page numbers there. That's where I got what I think is a really good template. So the first thing you do is you account for the ins and outs of the physical units. Where did the physical units of product go? So let's say you're making blue jeans. Well, when you open the factory doors at the beginning of the month, you have a certain amount of work in process, partially completed units, blue jeans. During the period, you start 800,000 pairs of blue jeans. So between work in process when you open the doors and the units that you start during the month, you have to account for in black 1.2 million units of product. The second part of this chart in this column is, well, where did those units go? And that's what this section is, refers to units to account for. Well, in this example, units blue jeans completed and transferred out were 600,000 in units. And when we closed the factory doors at the end of the month, we had 600,000 units in work and process partially completed. And I add that up and I get 1.2 million units to account for. So as a check figure, your units to account for should equal your units accounted for, which it does. So what you've done is you have accounted for the physical units. The next thing you do is you calculate your equivalent units. Now here's a hint or a ch another check figure. If you complete and transfer units, by definition, they're 100% complete. Or in other words, finished goods that are sitting there waiting to be sold are 100% complete. So in a cost equivalent units problem, you will be given the percentage completion for different groups of units. In this case, the units completed and transferred out by definition are 100% complete. So I multiply 600,000 by 100% and I get equivalent units of 600,000. I'm told in the problem that work in process, ending work in process is only 25% complete during the period. You got to remember which period it is. It's during the period, not the prior period or the next period. So I multiply 600,000 units in blue times 0.25, 25%, and I get equivalent units of 150,000. So I add up my equivalent units, and I get that figure in red at the bottom of 750,000, which we call work done to date. So even though we're accounting for 1.2 million units in equivalent units, which adjusts for the percentage completion, it's 750,000 equivalent units. So that's the top half of the page. If we go down a little bit, we now assign the cost. And this is typically the way it's going to be laid out in a problem. We have Costs associated with beginning work in process. We have costs associated with uh, production during the period, costs added during the period. And if I add them up in blue, I get 101,800, which is defined as cost incurred to date. I then multiply those by the percentage equivalent units. So work in process beginning, 100%. Multiply this across, I'm just transferring over dollars 
over into this column. Because in the far column where it says equivalent units, I'm going to calculate something called cost per equivalent unit. So I have that sum of the cost, 101,800, and then I take the equivalent units that I found out at the top part of the table in blue there, and I divide cost, the sum of the costs, 101,800, by the equivalent units, and I get cost per equivalent unit in light green, which is 0.14%. Last step, I assign the costs to the two groups of units that I had up here. And those two groups are completed and transferred out and work in process ending. Now I'm assigning costs. I had units. Now I'm assigning costs to those units. So for completed and transferred out, it's going to be 600,000 times the four point, times the 14 cents so if i were to scroll up let me undo there if i were to scroll up a little bit you'll see that it's that the number is linked to 600,000 in blue times the 0.414 in green i get the cost assigned to the units completed and transferred out in a and then down here i get 150,000 equivalent units in blue times the cost per equivalent units in green. There's my cost, 20,360. And I noticed that the sum of those two numbers is the 101,800, or the total cost that I was trying to assign. So I know that my cost equivalent per unit number is correct. That's why I say agrees to the check figure there. Because when I use the 14 cents to assign the costs, I end up assigning all the costs. So what we did there was we calculated what happened to the physical units. We then adjusted based on percentage completion to come up with equivalent units of production, 750. We added up our costs. We divided the total cost by the physical units, by the equivalent units, excuse me. And then we used the cost per equivalent unit, the 14 cents, and multiplied that by each of the, uh, each of the equivalent units, and we end up assigning the entire 101,800. So we have assigned costs to equivalent units, and we know where our costs were incurred based on equivalent units. That's as far as we're going to get on equivalent units. If you jump to the website, you'll see that I teach the toughest accounting courses. These are live chats, small group live chats on the toughest uh, topics that students ask me about. The dates and times are always changing as time goes on. So you can see that on the site. Also, um, the number one page that people click on here is the Cost Accounting for Dummies book. And I teach the book live online once a week. Here's the cover. You can find it on Amazon. And I teach the book online for free, usually at 11 o'clock Central every Saturday. You can email me for information on that. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.